Yo, what is up guys? It's Mike the NBA Guy here, and today, or actually yesterday, because I recorded this video uh, in advance, was the first day of NBA trades being open. And this is just the start of a very exciting week for me as a basketball fan. I'm sure the rest of you agree, because today trades open. A few days from now, the draft will happen on, I believe, the 18th, and then on November 20th, Friday, the free agency of 2021 will begin. I am very excited, okay? After months of nothing but fucking bullshit rumor after bullshit rumor, 90% of them being about Giannis, finally, some actual stuff is happening. And today was a pretty big deal, okay? It wasn't crazy. There was nothing absolutely, like, well, I don't know. There was nothing really ground-shaking in the NBA. Um, as a Sixers fan, I'm a little sad Al Horford is still on the team. But hey, I'm holding out, and Maury we trust, alright? Gotta trust the process, trust Daryl Maury, trust the owners to not fuck anything else up. But today's not about the Sixers, alright? The big move of the day was obviously Chris Paul to the Thunder. And in my opinion... This was a fantastic trade for both teams. There's not a whole lot of moves where you see one team clearly win the trade. For example, the Pistons trading Bruce Bowen to the Nets for essentially nothing. That was a trade the Nets clearly won, alright? Sorry, Crispy Flakes, um, your Pistons got fucking robbed today. <laughs> because what a joke of an organization that team is. Man. Probably make a video on the Pistons at some point, but uh, the team's a fucking trash heap, okay? It's a dumpster fire. Trash heap on fire. Anyway, that move was terrible. The Suns, however, getting Chris Paul, they acquired Chris Paul and Abdel Nadir. Abdel Nadir? I don't know. Never heard of him. Not really a big deal. But they basically got Chris Paul for Kelly Oubre Jr., Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome, oh shit, I forgot to, I was going to do the Rusty Buckets thing where I just sit there and fantasize about Kelly Oubre Jr. for like five seconds when I say his name, but oh well. Guess I'll actually have to be original for once. Anyway, uh, Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome, Jalen Lequet. I, I don't, I'm probably murdering that name, and a 2022 first round pick from the Suns. This is a great trade for both teams, all right? And I will definitely be doing a video on the Thunder, very, uh, the Thunder, the Thunder, very soon, um, maybe even tomorrow, because Sam Presti is a basketball genius. Okay, this dude might be the best GM in the league right now. Okay, like he's really fighting for it with Danny Ainge because this man has acquired so many picks. Sam Hinkey is having wet dreams at the university he teaches at now. Okay, like this man. I, it's unbelievable how many picks that the Thunder have now, and even though none of them are necessarily super duper great picks, like, picks are picks, man. You know, do not underestimate the power of having like 17 first round picks over the next 5 to 10 years. It's ridiculous. So the Thunder did great in this trade, okay? They're trying to start their rebuild. Kelly Oubre is a very good young player. Rigor Rubio is a solid enough starter as a point guard and can help with uh, getting Shea Gillis Alexander um, some openings because, like, the Shea Gilligas is a very weird player. I don't know if he's really a shooting guard or a point guard. I think he needs some more time to figure it out. Um, Ty Jerome is just a young guy. I know nothing about Jalen Lequay. Same with Abdel Nadir. All right, Chris Paul, meanwhile, is exactly what the Suns need. Okay, finally, finally. Someone else other than DeAndre Ayton to take some of the pressure off Devin Booker, okay? This Chris Paul, fantastic playmaker, okay? Still one of the best players in the league. Fantastic offensive player. He can still turn it on when he really needs to. Super clutch. So he's going to playmake. The lobs to DeAndre Ayton will be amazing. Getting Devin Booker some open shots for the first time in his career because uh, Ricky Rubio, he's a very good passer, but he's not necessarily an amazing playmaker just because he's not that gifted outside of passing. Chris Paul's a fantastic playmaker, and he's an amazing veteran presence on this young team who has been losing for so long. Uh, the Thunder are now... I think the Thunder are going to make the playoffs. I'm sorry, not the Thunder. Uh, the Suns. I think the Suns are going to make the playoffs for the first time in God knows how long. It's been like 2010, I believe. 
So the first time in a decade, I think the Phoenix Suns are making the playoffs next year. I'm calling it now. All right, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and third-year DeAndre Ayton, assuming he doesn't be a fucking idiot and do any more drugs. All right, he's going to be really good. He's going to have another breakout season. The Suns are going to be really good with that trio. And Kelly Oubre Jr., he was a good player, but let's not pretend he was anywhere near the level of Chris Paul. And I know Chris Paul's old. All right, look, he's 35 years old. He's on a big contract. He doesn't fit with the core of the team. However, the Phoenix Suns have just been losing for so long, and they desperately need to get Devin Booker some help. Getting the playoffs this year, even if they're really, I mean, they're not contenders at all, but getting to the playoffs this season would be huge for this team, especially if they can avoid even being the 8th seed. Like, they could realistically compete to be, like, a 6th or 7th seed in the West. I really believe Chris Paul makes them that good, okay? They legitimately, and we saw what they could do in the eight games of the bubble, all right, where they went 8-0. This team could be a pretty dang good team next season, and I'm very excited to see that, all right? Some other minor things, uh, James Harden has made it official that he would like to be traded. Philly and the Nets are his destinations. I would not be surprised at all if James Harden gets traded to the Brooklyn Nets at some point this season. I don't expect it to happen right away. I think the Rockets are going to do what they can do early in the season. They're going to let the offers roll in because let's be real, every team in the league would like to have James Harden. So maybe some other team, they they get desperate, they go for James Harden. I've even, even seen some stuff that maybe the Bucks go after him. I have no idea how that would work because I don't think him and Giannis get along or I'm not sure about their young pieces, but the Nets trade offer I've seen with Levert, Dinwiddie, and Allen and some picks, that one seems like a really good deal for both teams. Brooklyn Nets, I mean, they would have no depth and absolutely no defense, and three players who all desperately need the ball in their hands and have been known to be locker room problems. But on the other hand, I mean, you got three top 15 players in the league on one team and three of the best scorers in the league on one team, it's kind of hard to bet against that. I'll be completely honest with you. I do not believe in the Nets right now, but if they get James Harden, they might be my favorites. I would have to look at the rest of the roster. I would have to see how the start of the season goes, if Kyrie and KD start even more shit with other players. But, I mean, it's hard to bet against a Brooklyn team with three top 15 players, let me tell you. Anyway... Um, the Thunder trade to the Lakers with Dennis Schroeder. I don't know if that officially went through or not, or that's still just kind of rumored. Um, that's another thing I will include in the Thunder video because uh, another thing that Rusty Bucket said is that it makes sense because um, even though they might have been able to get a better offer for him than Danny Green in the 28th pick, the Thunder want the Lakers to be good because they want the Lakers to beat the Clippers this year, and they want Paul George and Kawhi to leave so the Clippers fucking suck, and the Thunder get all their picks to be high, instead of, if Paul George and Kawhi stay, all their first round picks are going to be very low. So, it's kind of like a freaking seven steps ahead move by Sam Presti. Another reason I'm saying, like, it sounds kind of hilarious and conspiracy theory to say on the surface, but, like, realistically, it actually makes sense, and Sam Presti might legitimately be a freaking basketball genius all right that's all the big moves i can think of today so i will be continuing to update on free agency now that there's finally some real news to talk about in the nba i am so happy i'm very excited for the draft um i'm not super knowledgeable about the draft but i'm still very excited to see it praying to god the sixers draft desmond bain but even if they don't draft desmond bain i'm hoping they get somebody good like cole anthony tyler terrell maybe isaiah joe all right Desmond Baines, who I'm praying for, though. I hope Sixers fans, I think you'll agree with me. Very excited for the rest of this week. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please like it, and please drop a sub if you have not already. Check out some other content on my channel, and I will continue doing my best to upload every single day until I finally burn out, because now that NBA content is really starting, it's going to be easier than ever for me to keep making videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.